Welcome to A Cup of Joe with, with Joe. Uh, today we're going to talk probably about one of the most important things that I think in terms of building performance and that's continuity of the, of the control layers. And there are four control layers. They are in order of importance the water control layer followed by the air control layer followed by the vapor control layer followed by the thermal control layer. The first is, is the biggie. Um, you know, it, rainwater entry and groundwater entry are, is, is the most common failure in terms of durability issues in, 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 in buildings. Um, air leakage and air barriers, not so much. But, you know, it's kind of boring to talk about, gee, you know, water control layers. It's real neat to talk about air control layers, you know, air barriers, you know. You know, I could never figure out why we have the AVA, the Air Barrier Association of America, which is, you know, first of all, why would you name it after a bad Swedish musical group? We should have had a WAVA, a Water Control Association of America, before we had an Air Control Association of America, an Air Barrier Control Association of America. I've been doing this for almost a half a century, and I've never gotten a call at three in the morning, my building is leaking air. So water control, water control, water control. And, and candidly, an air barrier really is a water barrier that has air tightness characteristics added to it. So in a real good design, you combine the functions of a water control layer with an air control layer. Now, where are the problems? Well, <laughs> we, we don't build square cubes without holes in them. You know, in the field of a wall or in the field of a roof, not much happens. It ha things happen when roofs meet walls. And it happens where we have holes in things, like windows. And so most of the problems are the connections between roofs and walls and the punched openings. The most common punched opening, of course, is a window followed by a door. And I, I believe that there are only two kinds of windows in, in the world windows that leak and windows that will leak. And it gets worse. Windows are like people. As windows and people get old, we leak. You youngsters have no idea what's, what's coming. So because we recognize that windows and human beings are flawed, we want to wrap the water control layer around the punched opening so when the inevitable leakage occurs, we drain it to the outside. A leak is not a leak if the client never sees it. We want an interior seal. And then the water that penetrates from the outside that gets to that interior seal, we can drain it back to the exterior. That's why we have pan flashings. And they have to have a back dam, a slope, and an end dam. And they don't, they don't have to be sheet metal anymore. They can be fluid applied, they can be membrane applied, they can be flexible. It's, it's awesome the innovations that we've seen in these materials in, in, in the last 20 years and, and, and amazing in the last 10 years. So there should be no excuse about how to deal with windows and doors except that they're going to leak as they age and then drain everything back from the inside to the outside. Then what else do we have to worry about? Oh my god, decks. Oh boy, attaching decks to a building and not having it leak, complicated. You need to make sure that the structure is protected from rain, rainwater entry from the top and the sides. And you have to basically make sure that your deck waterproofing integrates with the wall. Easy in concept, but not necessarily easy in practice. Well, well why? Well, the magic goopy that you have on your deck might be incompatible with the magic goopy that you have on the wall. You want to make sure that things stick to one another for a long time. The other thing is you want to make sure that the water that hits that deck drains off of the deck. You want to drain it to the outside or to a functioning drain. Easy in concept. Well, here's where it gets more interesting than it should get. Um, most of the deck waterproofing 
materials don't look very good. They're not aesthetically pleasing. So folks want to put stuff on top of these decks. They want to put tile and stone, pavers, magic stuff. And then when that happens, things get complicated. The easy answer is, is you have to assume that no matter what you put on the top, water's going to get through it. It's going to get to the waterproofing layer. Well, that's why we have the waterproofing layer. We're done yet. No, 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 no. You got to drain the water off of that waterproofing layer to your drain system or to the outside to control hydrostatic pressure. You need a drainage gap, a drainage mat, a drainage layer between whatever you put on the top and your waterproofing. The most significant omission or failure with deck waterproofing systems is people don't putting it, not putting in a drainage gap between the waterproofing and whatever you have on top. It gets worse if you have living area underneath. Ah, oh, what do we do now? Well, the best place to insulate is on top of the waterproofing layer. And if you put insulation on the top of the waterproofing layer, you still need a gap between the bottom of the insulation and the waterproofing layer. Well, can't we insulate from underneath? Well, yeah, you, you can. Uh, if you're going to do it, there's only one insulation material that you can use. Closed cell, two pound density spray polyurethane foam. Let me repeat. Closed cell, two pound density spray polyurethane foam. Nothing else works. Well, can't I use, you know, fluffy mineral wool? No. Well, I want to use mineral wool. I think mineral wool is fabulous. Put it on the top. Don't forget the drainage layer. Well, I want pavers. Well, put the pavers on pedestals on top of the in insulation with the drainage layer underneath that. There's always, always cross your heart, hope to die, pants on fire, crack on fire, you know, step on a crack, break your back, whatever phrase you want, you got to have that drainage layer. You need to drain the rain. Repeat after me. You need to drain the rain. Now, with all of these things that we've just talked about, let's go back to continuity. You got to connect the drainage control layer, the water control layer of the deck to that of the walls, the control of the walls to the roofs, and the control of the walls to the foundations, and deal with the interfaces. Problems happen where things come together. Where things aren't coming together is really boring. And with that, welcome back to another Cup of Joe some other time.